to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're going to be looking at um, how to set up the inventory system. So we're going to head into our third person character section where I have my inventory uh, folder and we're going to be basically creating this item pickup. Um, the first thing you need to do obviously is right click and create a blueprint class. Mine is just an actor class uh, and we'll open up the BP in a second. Now Mine is a cube at the moment because I haven't obviously created a, a mesh for the item. So the other thing we need to do is create a data table so that we can get uh, the information for that item. So uh, obviously in the last couple of episodes, we created these uh, struts and made our base item from that. And what I did is I re right clicked this base item strut and I just made a data table or I right clicked, I think you have to go through this way, sorry. Uh, and I think it's in miscellaneous, yep. And go to data table there and just pick this base item strut as your data table um, class. And then you can literally come in here and just create a new line and fill out all the information for that item. Uh, very, very kind of basic stuff. We've done it plenty of times in this tutorial so far. So hopefully none of you have too much of an issue setting that up. Um, once you've done that, obviously fill out all the item information that you want. Um, and obviously don't forget to make sure it sits under the right class and stuff. So when you obviously come to do yours, it, it works straight away. Then we're going to obviously open up that actor you should have made by now. Um, obviously, I called mine item pickup BP. It really doesn't matter what you call it. Um, and the only thing this is really going to house is a item name. Um, then you want to, so if I go to the viewport, sorry, you can see it's just a cube collision. It's just a cube static mesh. Obviously, the mesh will be whatever you want it to be, whether it's like a Pokeball for like uh, the original games, or if you want uh, something else like a chest, or if you wanted uh, a little loot bag, you know, anything like that, that's what your stacks mesh should be. And then it's just a collision box around that so that the character can pick it up. Um, if we go to the event graph, sorry. Um, and then we've obviously got um, the item name. I've created that and I've exposed this one so, and same for the quantity, which is just an integer, just so we have a name and how many are in that bag or box or Pokeball as an example. Pokeballs, they tend to only have one item per Pokeball. So most of the time it'll be just one, but it's more if you wanted to have, um, like, for example, you wanted to have it be five, uh, five Pokeballs you pick off the ground or five potions or whatever it might be that quantity will come in handy for that otherwise it will always just be set to one and you don't need to expose it to change it for each one if you just want one item each but that's up to you guys um so to begin with we are going to uh, do a begin and an end overlap for this item we're going to cast to the third person character for the multiplayer i'm getting the owner and making sure it's valid uh, before I set that third person character on the begin overlap. We then are just enabling and disabling inputs, uh, depending on whether it's inside or outside of the box, and we get the player controller for that to plug into the player controller. Uh, once you've done that, we I've assigned mine to the E key. Uh, I, there is a hello print string. I don't need that anymore. That was just to check it's working. You might want to do the same. And the first thing we're doing is we're getting the item data table we just created. And this item name in here is being plugged into this. So again, like we've been through before, this item name, whatever you give it, must be exact to whatever the row name is in the item data table. So that's very important that you get that right. And then we have a base uh, item struct here uh, as a variable, which is just an added item. And this is the item we're looking at on the ground. Um, so we're just setting that to that so we can obviously get the information from there that we need. Um, after that, we are breaking this out row and breaking that item information uh, to check a few things. So the first thing for me, now you can skip this step if you are just making a bog standard Pokemon uh, game because your inventory will open and you don't have battle items uh, when you're using them, etc. You will just have the inventory as a whole. So you don't need to worry about whether it's a battle item or a cartridge item uh, in this example. But if you're doing battle slots like I do, 
uh, and capture slots like I do, you'll need to do a check to see if you ha if it's a cartridge or a battle item. If it is a cartridge, we come up here and we check to see uh, if our cartridge item slots are equal to three. That because integers, uh, sorry, because arrays count zero as a slot, you have zero, one, two, three. Three would be your fourth slot. So we're checking to see if our capture item slots, the last index equals to three. If it does, we know it's full. Um, and then we will check one or the other. So if that's true, we don't need to check the capture slots. Um, we can just go straight to the inventory. Um, so if that's not true, we check the capture slots just to make sure what we're doing is we're making sure we don't already have this item because if we do already have this item, we need to add it to that stack, right? So we run through a for each loop of our capture item slots uh, in this function and we are getting that information and we're checking to see if that name exists in our capture slots. If it's true, we will just set this added item. We are, sorry, I'm losing track of what I was doing. Get the name, get the name of the item as well. And we, if it comes back true that we do have that in there, we increase the quantity um, and then we set that array element. So again, if we have four and then we pick up an extra one, it'll become five. And then we say the item has been found. If item has not been found, uh, we say it's false and we add that item. I also realize I need to add that into there actually, my bad. Um, there we go. So if we, if it comes through and the item has been found, it's true. Um, we say item hasn't been found and it's done. Obviously, if it runs through all of these, it's never going to set this item found to true. And it's going to come down here and say false. And then it's going to set, it's going to add this um, member to our array of capture items. Actually, I don't need that because it will never become true, right? Yeah, that, that's, that is right. I don't actually need it there because it will always remain false. Yeah, that makes sense. That's why I did that. Um, so yeah, so that's how we add that to our capture slots. The it's it's going to be very similar for the battle ones, by the way, just so you know. Um, and then we have to check our oh, that's the same one. My apologies. Check the inventory, which is exactly the same thing. Uh, it's running through this uh, exactly the same, but it's just running through that inventory instead, uh, and you get the same result as you did before. Um, and it's again the same for the battle slots in a moment, which we'll go over, but but it's exactly the same. You're just using a different inventory, which is our battle item slot. And then we destroy the actor once we're done with either of those, and that's the item added to the correct inventory. Obviously, if it's not a cartridge item, we check to see if it's a battle item. If that's true, again, very similarly, we check to see if the battle item slots are equal to three. If it is we know it's going to go into the inventory and if it's not it's going to go into this battle slots and at the end we just destroy the item and obviously if it's not a battle item or a cartridge we want it to go directly into our inventory and it's the same thing again we get the inventory we find if that item exists if it does we uh, add that to the quantity and if it doesn't we add a new um uh, item to our inventory now I'm not doing stacks in mine because um, there's no need. I'm happy for my items to go up over a thousand if it need if we have to. Um, but obviously, if you want it to hold at a stack, so you can only hold, for example, 100 Pokeballs, and then you start a new stack, uh, you just need to add a little bit extra code to do that. But it, it's nothing that sh you shouldn't be able to accomplish quite easily. It's just again checking before this if the stack is at the max of the stack, and if it's not. Um, add it to the stack if it is um then you obviously need to start a new stack it's, it's just doing something as simple as that but um yeah and that's kind of literally it that's it's very simple to to do item pickups to be honest um and once you've done this i can show it being being ran um if your widget if your inventory set up correctly you should in in theory start seeing these uh, appear in your inventory uh, because it just gets added straight into that inventory. If I go and pick up a few, here we go. Uh, we should, in theory, be able to um, see them in each one. So we've got battle items, and again, mine checks to see if it got, if there's slots 
available in the battle slots. If there's not, it automatically goes into this inventory. Uh, same for the capture uh, the capture items. And then we've got things like ev evolution items and we've got um, the uh, learnable moves. Um, so very, very simple stuff. And if I also come out of this and I just click on one of these, you can see in the details panel where I've exposed that name and the quantity, you can see it here. And again, if I change that burn heal to two, and we now go and pick it up. We should have two burn heels in our inventory. There we go. And if I go into the bag, go to the battle items, I have two burn heels. So very, very uh, useful stuff. Now, obviously, my widgets are not the prettiest and they're not set up the, the best. But obviously, it is all working as expected. So obviously, if you have any issues, always remember you can join the Discord and just ask me a few questions uh, on if you've gone wrong somewhere in your setup. Uh, obviously, I haven't shown everything because, I, I, again, I, I've mentioned this time and time again. I, I, I really do feel that if you're at this point, you guys should be kind of differing yourself, not only from me, but Pokemon in general, if you're if you're creating a, a, gen, a, a different creature game. But obviously, you know, uh, if you're making Pokemon, mine's not Pokemon, so mine's going to be different anyway to yours. So um, take what I'm, I do, but obviously change it and amend it to uh, work for your own games. Um, hopefully this has been useful to you guys uh, as i said before if you are just making the standard pokemon games and you just need to add it to your inventory you can literally bypass both of these branches and just do the check inventory and the destroy actor you don't need to check your battle slots or your capture slots as an example you can literally just do the check inventory and the destroy actor and uh, bob's your uncle you don't even need to do the branch checks. You can literally just go add it to my inventory. Um, so very, very simple if you are just following along for uh, to, to make a, a Pokemon clone. But hopefully it's been useful. Uh, if it has, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, it's free to do. You can always change your mind on the line. Don't forget to leave a little like because that really does help the videos do uh, better. And just as always, thank you so much for being uh, super supportive of the channel. Much love. Take care. See you next time. Bye.